Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sajinder Beer Singh Chahal. Thank you very much, EPTA and uh, Nihadi, for giving this opportunity to discuss with you on artificial intelligence in pulp and paper industry. As we uh, talk to each other on phones, there is artificial intelligence in that. We, uh, we are in the process of driving the driverless calls, uh, cars, that is a, a part of artificial intelligence. So the paper industry is now way away from the artificial intelligence implementation. We are already using artificial intelligence in so many aspects which we do not even realize that we are using it on our day-to-day -day lives. So just an overview that in this presentation we will be covering some of the aspects of the artificial intelligence and machine learning in the pulp and paper processes and the water treatment as our pulp and paper industry is mainly 99% water and 1% of the uh, fiber. So the uh, implementation of various new technologies in pulp and paper will be starting from the implementation in uh, water treatments. So once we imp uh, implement this artificial intelligence or the machine learning in the system, it will give us a better overall maximum output of the equipments will give a, a better, smoother, and a consistent product, and ultimately will reduce the cost of operations for the total paper making uh, and the processes. So how AI is creating value in, uh, across the globe? So it's a, a report from the McKinsey which shows that by 2025, we will be, uh, the AI will be generating close to $3.5 trillion as a revenue from the different uh, applications and you will be surprised to know that almost 50% of the industries, uh, they have already started using AI in a way, maybe from uh, one application or another. And paper industry is no way away from that. Even in India, AI is implemented at a couple of uh, sites. The customers are getting good ROI out of that. So we will be covering that how the paper industry can get more benefits out of that. So, how does AI create value? Uh, definitely we are having automations in our system. So the linear automations, we are measuring the data, we are giving some feedbacks to the system, we are giving the target values, it may be 10 to 15% variations. The, uh, uh, the process is just getting the data from whatever the uh, sensor we have already installed in the system. So we check the critical parameters from the system that uh, reading goes to the, our DCS or PLC and uh, the process is controlled with that. But with the uh, AI implementation, there will be real-time tracking of the all critical parameters. We will uh, come in the next slides that how uh, these parameters for the different application will help us to make a smoother process and uh, will making a uh, total making paper, uh, total paper making cost will be reduced with that. The optimization of machine learning algorithms will definitely help us because as uh, the artificial intelligence, the next step is the machine learning. Suppose we have uh, developed some algorithms already in the system. So how it's different from the linear integration which is already available in the, uh, our industries. So the uh, current uh, linear integrations will not learn from the process or not learn from the histories. Suppose some process is having some problem. So if it's repeating again and again, and we, unless someone will go and change the set points in the system, that problem will not be uh, rectified by the DCS or PLC itself. Whether in, after implementation of AI or machine learning, so these algorithms will be uh, learning from the history, from the curves, they will be regenerating the new algorithms so that we can get a smoother and a better outputs in the, uh, the long term. Uh, after implementation of AI. The predictive control is the heart of this uh, technology. Suppose something is happening uh, rapidly. So uh, what is the uh, function of AI or ML in that? So it will be predicting why this problem is hap uh, happening. So it's like five wire approach, that why one consistency is uh, changed. So maybe it's, that is from the uh, parameter of uh, which is changed at the back end, why that parameter is changed, there is change in the raw material, why that raw material is changed, there is change in uh, uh, season or weather, why that season is changed, because uh, uh, that raw material is bought from a place where that is uh, maybe very hotter or very colder. So that the change in one parameter is related to the number of other parameters. So this 
uh, predictive control will help us over a time to get at uh, the root cause of the problem. And once it learns from that root cause, in the future, whenever that change is happening, so this will be giving us a proactive uh, control so that the uh, system is not having any issues in the long term because of the same uh, parameters changing in the system. So why AI in pulp and paper industry? Definitely, uh, as I was telling, that paper industry is no way away from the pulp and paper, uh, from uh, uh, AI implementation. We already have so many sensors in the system. It may be the pH sensors, the uh, consistency uh, sensors, the, the uh, temperature sensors, the vacuum sensors, the, you can say, uh, the uh, paper machine speed analyz analyzers, the whole uh, number of hole counters. So, but these all sensors, we are generating a lot of data, but we don't have, you can say, sufficient manpower or time to analyze all these data and get maximum output of that. So AI implementation will definitely help in that because it will be giving us a real-time monitoring of all the parameters which are available in our system, analyzing at a single platform, which, may, which will be a cloud-based uh, platform, analyzing real-time and giving output real-time to the machines so that we can get a better, smoother, and a consistent uh, process output. So, Again, as what I was telling, in the linear integration, because we always say we already have automation, but there is no decision making by the process itself in the system with the linear integration or the uh, conventional DCS or PLCs. With implementation of AI, it will be taking decisions. As uh, we can take the example, it, implementing the AI is just like uh, taking birth of a child at home. Once the child takes birth, we learn for a couple of uh, years from uh, the family, then it, he will he start learning from that and eventually he uh, start taking decisions out of that. Similarly, once we install our uh, sensors or our technology at the system, for the first couple of days, it will be a learning curve. It will be learning how the system is behaving with the different changes happening in the system, it, not only with the the, pro, uh, the process parameter which we are man, uh, monitoring, but how that process parameter is uh, related to the n number of other parameters in the system. So after uh, making the algorithms and uh, completing the learning curve, it will be making decisions uh, by itself, which will be uh, cutting down a lot of, you can say, human intervention in that. It will also reduce the dependency of uh, manual, manual controls. Definitely, if it's an automated control, it will be having uh, huge impact over the manual controls. Suppose uh, it's observed at many different sites, according to the skills of the manpower, one shift is running very well, another may be having uh, some problems rapidly, and the third may be having some different problems. But if the decision making is through a standard algorithm, and that algorithm is continuously learning from the, the curve, so it will be having a smoother operation, smoother decision makings throughout the shift, throughout the week, throughout the year, or even the long terms. So what we call is, uh, this platform is like Alexa. So Alexa is our, you can say, the trade name for the, the uh, product. It's a real-time monitoring uh, system. What it do is you already have uh, sensors installed in the system. We install some additional uh, sensors in the system so that we can have a complete control of your uh, process. So I'll come to, in the next slides, come to the different application wise. And means from these uh, uh, sensors on the real time monitoring, we will be uh, deriving the data insight. The data is uh, uh, sent to the cloud real time and is analyzed real time and will be giving back the feedbacks to the system. And the, the data visualization will be there because in the traditional systems only can say the couple of mills will be having the data visualization available in hand with everyone. With this platform being a cloud-based platform, anyone who's having the, can say the username access for that can access the data anywhere, can uh, see what's happening in the system, and also the system as the data visualization is there, so multiple can say observations can be done on that and a, a smoother op, uh, output can be achieved. So this is automated intervention as I already uh, told you. So as we reduce the human intervention in that, the uh, chances of variation in the process is reduced. 
So with the real-time continuous data monitoring, so that I can take an example, suppose uh, uh, checking a consistency. It will take like three to four hours, right from drawing the sample from the site, uh, taking the sample to the lab, uh, then putting it in the uh, oven, then calculating it, sending back to the, uh, the process. So if it's a real-time uh, monitoring for that, on the basis of that, some decisions can be make, uh, made so that the uh, this sample can be drawn robotically, real time, so it means as we see if a mill is having say one testing a day and another mill is having eight testings a, way, uh, in a day, so the mill which is having eight testing a day will be having a better control over the system. What if we increase this testing frequency by uh, every five minutes? If with eight uh, testings a day we are getting a good control and with having consider the 12 uh, testing every hour, so it will be a much more controller system. Um, so AI will help in that and will give a definitely a better, smoother uh, product and reduce in the cost optimization of this. Another thing is as machine learning is very much required for the future because as we were discussing that uh, uh, the industry is expanding. So the availability of the subject matter result uh, experts is limited. So they can't be available at the different sites. So if machine learning is there, so based on that, there will be smoother process at even the remote, remote locations at, at the prime locations. Along with that automation, which you already have, that can give us, uh, give you a, a better, can say, more uh, output in the terms of economics and in the productions. It will be resulting optimal plant op uh, operations. So as I was telling that uh, from the applications, I will be discussing two or three applications quickly. First is microbial control. So now as the, everyone is talking about the ZLD, so definitely when we will be recycling the water in the system, so the microbial control activity will be increasing because once it, uh, the water is going to the effluent treatment plant, we are generating or we are can say producing bacteria in that to run the effluent treatment plant, then we are taking that water back to the system. So we are generating the bacteria, definitely that bacteria will be there once the water come back to the system. So we need to have a closed loop control so that how much uh, uh, bacteria need to be generated and how much need to be killed once it's come back to the system because if we add too much of the biocides, it will also again going back to the ETP and will be disturbing the effluent treatment process. So then the ZLD will become even a difficult challenge. So what uh, can be done with the, the implementation of AI is in the traditional uh, this, uh, total bacteria count or fungus count, it will take close to two to five days uh, uh, depending upon the testing procedure which we are using. So it means we take a sample, we test it after five days, we get a report like SRB is close to five days. So then we take a decision. By the time if the machine is producing 300 tons, we have already produced close to 1,500 tons. And then we take a decision, again wait for the next one, again 1,500 tons of paper will be produced. By just making one uh, changes and observing it, we have already produced a huge amount of paper on that. What we do with AI implementation is we will be checking the Yes, okay. So we will be having the multiple uh, data sources for that, not only the uh, total bacteria counts with the other parameters affecting the bacteria, uh, bacterial activity like pH, temperature, consistency, ORPs, and that will give us an index which will help us to uh, optimize the dosages of the products and give a, giving us a better uh, control. This is example from one of uh, the uh, implementations where the number of holes per day was an average close to 20 plus and after implementation of this AI, this went down less than five. Similarly with the bacteria counts as we were having the closed loop controls, so the, which was having uh, two digits in uh, 10 to the power four uh, came down to single digit less than five. Again, second one is the retention aid. So in that also, in the traditional one, we are just checking the white water consistency and based on that we are making the decisions. But with AI, whatever the sensor you already have in the system, maybe the temperature, pH, conductivity, ORP, the vacuum levels, the machine speed, jet wire ratio, that can also be hooked up with the system which will be making a more prescribed 
uh, decisions for the uh, retention aid system, giving us a consistent white water consistency and uh, uh, can say stable drainage and a smoother uh, process. Water treatment, there are many applications where we have already implemented it as uh, due to the real-time monitoring of all the parameters right from real to can say river to ETP and again back to the paper machine. If it's controlled from the source, not at the end of pipeline, so it will be having a different uh, scenario in the mill. So this real-time uh, measurement along with the automation will help the industry achieving the ZLD and reducing the white, uh, the water consumptions in that. Just coming to the conclusion, so because it's being a big subject, we can uh, discuss for the whole days or a week on that. And, uh, uh, but with this limited time, I'll just give you a brief. There are many other applications available. We, you can always contact us and we can discuss in detail according to the systems. With just uh, uh, this, uh, I would like to conclude the session with this, the, by implementing AI and machine learning in the system. So the, uh, based on the predictive control will help big way to improve the speed of precision uh, and different stages of the process, reducing dependency on the manual controls. As we reduce the dependency on the manual controls, we have a better quality throughout uh, the year. So we will be having a better economical uh, conditions for the mills and we'll be saving a lot in the cost. So the, as the cost will be uh, saved, so it will be uh, good for the industry. The efficiency is improved, which is very much required for the system, and we can build a sustainable solution for the industry. So AI plot platform convert the unstructured content into an actionable intelligence. That's it. Thank you very much.